looking at New York City through the lens of Jamaica Bay as opposed to Central Park for me was like a complete revelation and I, I, I began to work and think and research differently, putting the water at the center and seeing the land really at the edges. The water is the new sort of front and um, of course there are challenges with that situation because we, f we face, you know, plus 30 inches of sea level rise in the, the sort of midterm and uh, we have increasing storm surge and hurricane activity and so we developed this strategy of a breakwater that is then seeded with oysters. So it is, a, it is a piece of infrastructure day one that takes the wave action and lowers the velocity of this, the wave action, combining that with an onshore dune to reduce flooding okay. and that structure is seeded with oysters uh, through the Billion Oyster Project. Uh, what are we looking at here? Um, we're looking at two different species of algae. We have the isocrisis, and we have the tetrasomus. So we feed our, our larvae and our oysters two different types. So the tetra would be more for the adult oysters, mm. and the isocrisis would be more for the larvae, since they're so small and they can't really in digest the tetra because it's so big. Uh, and it's not like only us that's spawning oysters themselves, because as we do put them in the water, our goal is to have them spawn themselves. And we establishing don't, population. Yeah, we don't so force them to spawn. We want them to spawn. Okay. So if we put them in the water and we allow them to spawn, then that would increase our numbers much more quickly than we would know. So it's not really about the actual number. It's right. just knowing that we have oysters that will uh, establish a sense of replenishing yeah. our harbor. Well, I wonder if we could take a look at the, the oyster spat uh, tank. Okay. Um, this is a really interesting tank. What What's going on here? So this is basically a setting tank. It's where we oh. stack <laughs> bags of shell and for larvae. Larvae is basically... They're oysters. Yeah. Oyster yeah. larvae, yeah. Baby oysters. Baby oysters. And they, after a while, they tend to set and they need something to set on. So we use reused oyster shells, which we get from restaurants mm -hmm. where they throw fake shells and we stack them, we put them in bags, we let them grow. Okay. When they grow into, they, we know that they're, there's a good amount of spat on a shell. Mm. We take them out and we put them into our docks. We've placed 20 million oysters from our, from our facilities here, grown our facilities here in the harbor. 20 and million? And that's how we count them when they yeah. leave our, leave, you know, go from land into the water. And they're still very small. And most, most of those tiny oysters over the course of the next several years will die but a subset of them will live and thrive on the, on the okay. shells. Um, so we still have you know, 980 million to go, <laughs> which is a lot. Yeah. The biggest impact, the biggest positive impact of our work is the habitat, providing habitat and food for other animals. Okay. We see an immediate and dramatic um, impact on local biodiversity and bioproductivity just by putting a cage of oysters on the bottom. We collect from about 60 restaurants and they separate the shells from the rest of their trash and put it in separate containers that we can come and pick up that cage in a matter of weeks. You'll put it down somewhere where you can't see any animals and several weeks later in the summer you come back and it'll just be completely covered with living things. Okay. And you see you know, higher order fish and lobsters and blue crabs and moon snails and horseshoe crabs all because you have a little habitat there that and that's and the oysters are pulling the food out of the water and placing it on the bottom as food for other animals. Okay. The concept of rewilding New York Harbor is a really nice one because um, Everywhere you go on the planet, if you want to increase and preserve biodiversity, um, if you want to slow down climate change, this idea of rewilding natural places and unnatural places, I think is a really powerful concept that we really like the idea of here in New York Harbor. What's particularly exciting about it is that there is not a constituency that's really against that. Um, because we, particularly because Billion Oyster Project was born out of the Harbor School and we had great relationships with all the maritime operators in the harbor. They trust us, so they know that we're not going to try and do something to injure their use or diminish their use of the harbor. This is one of the most ultra-urban, highly degraded marine ecosystems on the planet. And yet these oysters are living. Kids are getting engaged in planting them. We've done 20 million. I think it's a really exciting to think about it, not just as a model for what it means here, but for what we can pull off for biodiversity around the planet. Here you can see the kind of key concept of the idea, which is 
a new watery urban landscape that is, you know, shaped and formed by natural living systems in the form of shellfish and oysters yeah. and finfish. And, and then you can actually literally see how this, this living landscape, yeah. which is rich with biodiversity, is helping to work in sync with the onshore community. And they are literally kind of nurturing and fostering each other. So we're all doing our part. I think that's what's so exciting about New York right now. And, um, and uh, the, the breakwater structure itself is a huge step forward because it means that there's this massive test of, yeah, of an what... It's a physical thing that It's a can physical see thing and, of a scale. Of a scale that, that and, and, matters. And it is a scale that is both uh, effective from a risk reduction standpoint and yeah. a scale that's incredibly powerful from an ecological regeneration standpoint. Right. Hey, Tim. Hi, Roland. Welcome to How Brooklyn Bridge Park. Thanks. Good to be here. This is going to pick a better day or a it's more a beautiful spot. We have a program called uh, Waterfront Edge Design Guidelines, WEDGE, which is taking off in a very big way here in the city and across the nation. A, a voluntary incentive program to get people to do better waterfronts for more access, for better ecology, and for resiliency. So this park was uh, designated as one of the first wedge certified parks for, the, for all those good reasons. Okay. It survived Sandy better than most any other waterfront in the, uh, in the area. The water came in, the soft edges did their job, let the water in where it could and let the water back out after, after it seeded with minimal damage to the park infrastructure. So it's, a, it's really a great example of providing a wonderful resource, maritime and otherwise, for the people, but also designing for the, the reality of sea level rise. Part of this is quality of life, you know, and, uh, and then part of it is survival. We live in a day of, uh, era of climate change, man-made climate change. And if we don't protect the city, this coastal city, um, it's not, we, we have bigger problems in front of us.